All right, welcome back, YouTubers. Channel Mac here with you. I've got a vintage, you know, I, I guess 1993 is vintage. It's a 1993 G.I. Joe Street Fighter II figure. Uh, G.I. Joe at this point, G.I. Joe was a great toy back in the 80s. Up until about 1987, G.I. Joe was probably the greatest thing since sliced bread. But after that, uh, everything kind of went to hell, and this is a good example of it. Street Fighter II figures uh, made by Hasbro. Um... Yeah, this is Chun Li. This is kind of crappy. As a result, you can get these now for pretty much the same price as they retailed for back in the day. I paid seven dollars for this mint on card. I'll show you guys the front there. I'll show you guys the wonderful back. Look at Ken. You can't see him that well. I have a shit camera. There you go. Uh, look at Ken. He looks like he's about a hundred years old. Decent picture of Chun-Li there. Uh, some of these figures do go for a little bit. I know Vega goes for a bit. Bison does. Somebody's texting me there now. Uh, E-Honda. But, uh, yeah, for some reason, Chun-Li doesn't go for anything. So, I'll just give you guys a shot at the back. File guard there. Game pro tip. I've had this for a while. It's kind of contemplating keeping it um, sealed but there's not much point I just as soon open it up and see what it's all about I never bought these I was probably I was definitely too old for G.I. Joe's at this point 93 um, I, I said I probably bought my last G.I. Joe in 88 I think it might have been Jinx the the Red Ninja but uh, yeah so I'm gonna crack this open I've got one hand here because my camera sucks and it doesn't work on the tripod I bought so I'm just gonna Dig in with my fingernails and hope for the best. There you go. One of the features of the uh, G.I. Joe's around this era was uh, all the accessories came on the plastic trees. As opposed to the ones in the 80's that were pre-punched, uh, pre pre-cut out. So, uh, yeah, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. They also all came with uh, stands, which I do think is a good thing, because these were, back in the day, you couldn't get these easily. The only place you could get them was uh, in the accessory packs. But uh, after, I guess, around 1990, they started putting one of these per, uh, per figure. So there you go. The instructions, that's the figure. Horrible looking sculpt on the face. And what you'll notice right off the bat, it doesn't have the traditional O-ring, which made G.I. Joe's so popular and so poseable. So there you go. I'll show you guys the... This is what I actually wanted to take a look at. The pamphlet here. Menace in the Wilderness. Little G.I. Joe catalog. Order now. Set of four international action figures. There you go. These are actually worth a few dollars now. The hovercraft. And five flag points. Yeah. I had this actually. This thing here. I don't know what it is. It's a silly vehicle though. Cobra. Weapons do not shoot. Deep Six action figure, mail away. Cobra Wolf, that's what it was called. Hawk with action, yeah, there you go. That hovercraft would have been pretty sweet for 29 bucks. I don't know if that's the exact same one that was available uh, five or six years earlier. There's, yeah, there's your mail away order form. Pretty sweet. Carrying case there. Dog tags, which I never understood. I know a friend of mine used to have a pile of them. Somebody keeps sending me text messages. I don't know if you guys can hear that. But anyway, there you go, guys. G.I. Joe Chun-Li with some kind of super kick. Yeah, I think the mechanism might be pooched. Oh, there you go. Kicking the balls. Chun-Li, horrible looking figure, horrible looking line of action figures in general, the uh, Street Fighter G.I. Joe figures, but uh, there you go guys, thanks for watching.